Hello, we're going to have a, a quick look at this set of two station lamps today and these were catalogue number RT266. Originally they were sold in sets of four as RT265 in 1963 but I think by the time 1964 rolled around they seem to have been marketed as sets of two. So these are from the, the Trying Hornby period, they, they started well back in the, the Trying Railways period and I think they lasted till around 1970, just, just before, just short of the Hornby Railways period coming in. We'll just pop the box down. So what you got in the box was two lamps and here we've got one lit up, I've got a little power running to it. And you've got the appropriate cabling. You'd have got two of these little feet which you could either pin down to the baseboard or into one of these clip fit accessories. You've got two of these which would clip into the track. They are these little these little feet are very very fragile. We'll just pop that down. So all of those items would come wrapped in this sort of cellophane. Here we've got a junction box which you could use to join both the lamps together. We'll have a look at the instructions for these in a moment. So these are all still in the original packaging here. And there we've got the two of those clip fit accessory things there and we've got the two little feet there. Those feet really are very fragile. Let's we'll just have a look at one of these lamps which isn't lit up. So very simple things. We've got the glass sort of filament type bulb in there. So sort of a cartridge bulb just pushes in into the top. And we've got two wires into the lamp. Both wires don't run all the way up, up the lamp, just the black wire does. And the green wire just makes contact with the with the the, uh, the shaft of the lamp there in, in the plastic housing there, so it forms the, the return path. They're quite simple things, they're quite effective. We'll just pop that down and then we'll have a look at the old instructions here. There we go, Trying Hornby, set of two station lamps, RT266. Then we've got a list of the contents of the lamp assembly. The junction box, I forgot to mention. We looked at one in the cellophane, didn't we? And then the base adapter and the mass base clips. Just have a look at that. The junction box is quite a nice thing. Connect it up to the old controller and then you could put multiple lamps in the end of it there. Let me just pop that down we'll, we'll have a look at one. Here's one I've got, already got out of the cellophane. So it's got Triang's name on it there and made in England. We'll just have a look at the underside there. And we'll just use these two little tabs here and you could connect, connect the wires in there. And just crimp them into place. These little tags on the other end to go directly onto the old controller. We'll just pop that down. And back to the instructions. And you can see that little little base which could be pinned to the layout baseboard there. They are quite fragile, they're very easy to break those. And they could also go into this clip fit base here, which would, would clip into the track. Same piece as used on, on all the catenary masts. We'll sort of look back at the instruction sheet there. There's the junction box in use. And that's quite interesting how the, the, the lamp assembly works at the, the top of the lamp. We've got that plastic cap. There's a little foam pad. And then we've got the contact onto the back of the, the cartridge style bulb. And then we've got the, the lamp housing there. Quite often when you find these, these lamps, they're, they're not working. And sometimes it's because the bulb is just burnt out because it's got too hot over time. Or sometimes they just get very, very dirty and the electrical contact is just broken. So it's worth cleaning up. But I like to put LEDs in. Uh, I've decided to to switch all mine over to LEDs, which means you can just leave them on for hours at a time and they don't get hot and they don't switch themselves off by accident. The iPhone really does struggle picking this lot up in the dark, but the pools of light created by the LEDs are really quite nice. And it is very noisy, the, the image captured by the phone here. we just bring this B12 to a stop there. Of course, the other, other way to mount these lamps on the layout is just to plug them directly into the slots. In the station platforms, which I think primarily is, is how they were designed to be used, they just slot straight in there. 
they can become a bit wobbly over time and sometimes I'll find just adding a little bit of blue tack into the hole can uh, prevent those from wobbling too much just got a bit, bit of blue tack there to keep the spaghetti under control so these do have the the cool LED lamps in there but, uh, we'll just switch that round and they, they work to really good effect we'll just pop that down I had meant to say that these clip fit accessories and, and the little feet you don't you don't pin them in these just slide in just like that and just clip straight into place there and then the lamp just clips straight into the hole there and the cable comes directly out the bottom through the hole in the baseboard ideally um, so we'll just unclip that one and that is just plastic and they are so delicate and all you need to do is knock those and they snap straight off we'll just pop that down and here is one of the the cartridge type bowls we just had a look at it and it does, it does still work this one we'll just put a, a little bit of power on it and have a look at it and it just lights up like that there we go I feel the heat in my, my finger from that already so they do tend to get quite hot quite rapidly and as they get hot things expand and they sometimes just switch themselves off I find so I just recently got these two non non working lamps and they've been glued onto the bases so I don't intend to break them off and they didn't have bulbs in but uh, I think we can just get LEDs into these with, with a minor adjustment and it doesn't really damage the lamp at all so you could put bulbs back in at a later date if you wish to so we'll have a look at, at doing that I think we'll probably install those near that level crossing we put in just a couple of weeks ago all the lighting on the layout is controlled by this one lever frame switch here which is just one of Triang's on off switches so at the moment everything is on and we'll throw the switch and then we can turn everything off so that's the lighting in the buildings too so in the engine sheds I've got some LED strips we can, we can have a look at those later and we'll just switch that back on everything I learned about wiring up LEDs was from Dave Howarth's channel on YouTube so I'll leave a link to that in the description box there's some really helpful videos there off one more time and then back on again we go now from watching his videos I discovered that the best way to power them is to use one of these power adapters and these can be just got from the discount store for not very many pounds and at the moment I have mine set for just 9 volts and that seems to do the trick for me although the LEDs are individually protected by uh, resistors. So part of the work's already do, been done for me here as the, as the bulbs have already been removed they're, they're quite stiff to get out sometimes they're, the casting is quite tight it's more of an interference fit they're not very smooth so we are going to have to just run a file just around the inside of there to clean it up a little bit and to, to give us a better contact with the with the, uh, the contact off the LED so this little metal or copper disc there just goes on the back of the bulb to make contact and there's a little sponge pad in there which is supposed to add pressure to it to, to make it to make the contact it's not very reliable I don't think I, I tried initially to get this contact to, to make contact with the with the, the foot on the, on the back of the LED it wasn't very reliable so I now solder this one onto the LED and just let the other foot make contact with the, the metal housing here it's quite successful so we'll just put that to one side now the LEDs these are little five millimeter clear white ones and these are cool you could use warm and when you push them in they don't quite fit so you do have to do a little bit of work I've just used the rotary tool and just gone round it and taken a little bit off until they fit in you don't have to take very much off and they fit nice and smoothly nice and snugly in there and then we're gonna we're just gonna cut these so that they uh, we're able to solder the long one the positive one and we're gonna bend the short one so it makes contact with the housing so we get that return path right the way down the shaft to the green wire which just makes contact with the, with the, the long aluminium shaft here the lamp post I suppose so we'll just have a, a quick look at that so if you've got no cabling in the lamp at all they're very straightforward to, to rewire you just need to run the cable all the way down the post and leave plenty at the top to solder onto the LED and leave plenty at the bottom to go below the baseboard now the little plastic base 
you need to push in a piece of cable, but you need to strip it back so it's bare wire all the way back and just leave it bent off the bottom there and leave the, the bare cable over there because that's just going to be crimped with the post to make the contact. So then you just need to feed your cable through there. There's a very tiny hole in the bottom, so you, you do need this very fine doll's house type wire. And it's quite a fiddly thing just getting that through the hole in the bottom. There we go. And we feed that through. And we just push that into place and that, that's all that makes the contact. We're talking very low tech here, but it does work. And then you just trim off this excess copper, copper wire here with, with, with a knife. And then we can just wire that up below the baseboard. Now, I couldn't find doll's house wire and in the end, somebody suggested to me that perhaps I should just use this network cable. So I got an old network cable and took away the shielding and I just used the, the strands and then they seem to work very well. So I'm just use a needle file and just clean up the casting a little bit just to make it easier for the LED to fit in there. And just rub around the inside there so we can get a better contact when we bend the leg over the short leg of the LED to make contact with the, the casting there. And we're just offering the LED. And that sits in there really quite nicely. We'll just have a look at that. So I'm just going to bend the short leg over like that, quite tight to the LED. And I'm not going to cut that off until I've soldered this one. I'm going to, I'm going to cut that off short, uh, as short as I dare, and then, and then solder it in, you know, with using the helping hand. So I'm just going to take off that, that copper disc because we're, we're not going to need it. So we'll just desolder it. Just heat it up a little. There we go. And we'll keep that safe for a later date in case we want to reverse the process. At this point, it's probably worth just testing, testing what we've done so far, because if, it, if the LED is not working, we could just replace it with another one before we go any further. We'll just give that a go, and we'll see. It glows really nicely. So I'm just gonna trim that bit off now, and then we'll, we'll fit that into the housing. So I've just pushed that into the casting, and using the blade of a screwdriver, I've ensured that the, the negative foot there is bent over and making good contact with the casting and the positive one's in line with the arm so the, the cable can run down it. And there's a tiny little slit in these caps. I don't know whether we can see that. And turn that around there, we've got that slit there. That should just sit over the cable. And you could put a bit of blue tack in here to insulate the, the positive one from the casting, just in case. But if you bend it in the right place, it should be fine. Blue tack could also stop a bit of light leak at the top there. And let's have a look at that on the underside. It looks quite convincing, doesn't it? So I'm going to just going to put a little bit of power on this and, and see how we've done. I've got the old fly leads here. So the, the red one's the positive, goes to the black cable in this instance, and the black one goes to the green cable, which is a negative. And there we go, it's sprung into life. I think that's a, a really effective way of rejuvenating these old lamps and uh, possibly rest in the bulbs if you have ones that work because you, you could always go back to the bulbs in the future if you wanted to. It's uh, just pennies, these LEDs are pennies. I'd initially thought that when, when I was doing these lights I would put them either side of that level crossing there but on filming that uh, piece of video in total darkness for the lamps on that level crossing is quite nicely illuminated as it is so I think we, we won't put them there. I'm thinking now that we'll put them over here in the yards here. You see where the, the blue DMU is there in the distance next to next to the gasometers. So I think just on this side of the DMU there we'll put them on that siding there, evenly spaced down there. That'll just lift up that area. We can see those engine sheds I, I mentioned earlier. Now I've got LED strips in there. So we'll just have a, a swift look at one of those. Now in the buildings on the layout, including the, the old engine sheds here, I've used these LED strips. Now you can buy these by the meter or on a short roll like this, and they can be snipped into, into a minimum of 
three LEDs and then you could do six or nine and so on in, in groups of three. And they've got the little solder tabs in the appropriate places where you snip them off. So they're very, very easy to work with. These particular ones are sticky back, so you could just peel the backing off and stick them to the insides of the buildings. Now, we'll just have a, a quick look inside the building. So I've got, just got two strips stuck to the underside of the roof in here. It creates quite a nice effect. It's not supposed to be true to life. It's just quite toy-like. It just lifts the buildings when, you, when you're looking at the layout. I think it's quite a nice effect. And I've decided to use warm white instead of cool white in the buildings. And I kept cool white on the, on the yard lamps. We'll just move this blue DMU out of the way and then we'll offer in the lamps and we'll get them installed. So I've speeded this up a bit so it's not too boring. We're just offering up the lamps there and we'll get the, the positions marked for the holes for the cables. We'll swiftly drill those holes in there and then we'll hoover up the mess. And then we'll offer back in the lamps and feed the cables through the baseboard. It's quite tricky getting these cables through the baseboard. They're really tiny and they, they catch on the, on the woodwork a little bit. And there's the wiring underneath and we'll just use some terminal blocks to connect those and we've got the resistor going in there. As you can see, my wiring is very neat and tidy, but I do know what it all does it, and it does do the job. And there we go, we're getting that resistor in there. And it's always fun working on your back in the semi-dark, isn't it? There we go, just get that onto the baseboard and then we'll connect up the power supply to it. Swiftly through there and then the other one. There we go, oh, almost got it. Got it in the wrong way around there. So we've got those installed and wired up and we'll just switch them all on. I think that looks pretty good. It really lightens up that area of the yard there. And we'll just bring back the, the DMU into that siding. Gently away here. And then we'll bring gently to a stop up here. I think that looks pretty good. We've got the old Intercity Express set sitting there waiting to go and away she goes with the green light. And once she's through those points, we'll switch those and we'll watch those light signals change again. They're really quite nice in the dark, aren't they? If she storms into the third radius curve, we hear that wonderful sound of the ribbed wheels on the, on the steel track. Tiny bit of wheel slip as she climbs. And the unintended effect from those coaches is that slight flicker of the, the poor pickup on the axles. But I really quite like that. Storms across the bridge there. Now I think that's probably about it for this week. If you look back again next week, we'll have something else from this later try and warm period. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye now.